In this video, we're going to learn about balancing chemical equations. First, we'll learn why we need to balance chemical equations, and then we'll look at a sample equation and we'll learn how to balance it step by step. So first, why do we need to balance chemical equations in the first place? Well, we have to follow something called conservation of mass in a chemical equation. Conservation of mass says that the total number of particles on one side of the equation must be equal to the total number of particles on the other side of the equation. So in this example, we have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. We have to have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms on the other side, or else we have disobeyed conservation of mass. So when we balance a chemical equation, we are going to be changing these numbers out in front of these chemical species. These are called coefficients. And if there is no coefficient, we just assume that there's actually a 1 there. We just don't actually write the 1 in there. And so we will be changing coefficients so that we get a total number of atoms on the left to be equal to the total number of atoms on the right. So let's break this down with a little bit of a simpler example. Here's our equation for building a bicycle. And you can see that when we combine a bicycle frame and wheels, we're going to end up with a bicycle. And if you notice, we have suddenly out of nowhere added an extra wheel when on this side of the equation we only had one wheel. So what we have here is called the skeleton equation. In other words, it only shows the actual pieces of equipment and what we would end up with a product. It's not completely balanced. And so to balance, we can add more things as we need them. So I need to add in the extra wheel here and... Now we have a completely balanced equation showing that when we mix one frame and two wheels, we're going to end up with a complete bike. So let's look at an example um, of a chemical equation and we'll see if we can balance this one. So you can see this one is quite a bit more complex than our other examples. And I'm going to show you kind of a step-by-step -step system here that if you follow this system, you should be able to balance any chemical equation. So here are the steps to balancing a chemical equation. The way the system works is that we just work through each element step by step, making sure the total number of that element is the same on both sides of the equation. So, for example, we can start just with aluminum here. This is Al, aluminum. And we can make sure that the number of aluminum atoms on the left is equal to the number of aluminum atoms on the right. Once we get that element balanced, we'll move on to the next element. And we want to work in these steps where we start with metals, then we move to non-metals, and then we move to hydrogen, then we move to oxygen. So we just go step by step until the very last thing we balance is oxygen. Now maybe you're wondering, what is a metal and what is a non-metal? Which one is hydrogen which one is oxygen? So on the periodic table, on the left side of the periodic table over in this region, these are called metals. And then over here on the right side, these are called the nonmetals. And so there's a, a boundary line. If you have a periodic table in front of you, you probably see this boundary line that separates the metals from the nonmetals. So over here are the metals, over here are the nonmetals. So if we start by balancing all of the metals first, then we move on to the nonmetals, ignoring hydrogen and oxygen until the end, we should be able to balance any chemical equation. So let's try that. Uh, with this example right here. Now I really recommend using a pencil as you balance your chemical equations because you probably have to go back and change the numbers uh, to make sure that they're completely balanced. Now what I like to do first is I like to split the equation in half and just list all the different elements that I have on each side of the chemical equation. Alright, so we have aluminum, potassium, bromine, sulfur, and oxygen. And I listed them in order. I started with the metals. Aluminum and potassium are both metals. And then here's my non-metals. Remember, I leave hydrogen and oxygen right till the end. We don't have hydrogen, so I end with oxygen. Now I can go through and just add up the number of each particle on each side of the chemical equation. So I'll start on the left side. And we have just one aluminum here. And then potassium, we have two of them because of this subscript here. And then we have three bromines, we have one sulfur, and we have four oxygens. Over on the right side, we have two aluminums. We have one potassium, one bromine. We have three sulfurs. And the reason we have three sulfurs is because this sulfate ion, SO4, is inside these parentheses, and it's multiplied by three. So that means everything, this subscript here, multiplies everything inside by three. So we have three sulfurs, and we have 12 oxygens. 
Now we can only change the numbers in front, only these coefficients. We can never touch the subscripts. So subscripts will stay the same. We can just change the things out in front. So let's start with aluminum. So we have one aluminum on this side, but we have two on this side. So we need to end up with two on this side as well. So I'm going to change this subscript. Since there's nothing there, that just means there's one, and I'm going to change that to a two. And when I do that, um, that's going to balance that aluminum. So that two out front is going to multiply everything here, just this area right here, by two. So that's going to give me, I'm going to change this from one to two aluminums, but it's also going to affect the bromine. We had three, now we're multiplying it by two, and so now I have six bromines. That's okay, we'll come back to bromine later, we won't worry about it right now, because we're going to move to the next metal, which is potassium. So aluminum has been balanced, potassium is not balanced, so I have two on this side, right here, I only have one over here. So I'm going to put a two out front of our potassium bromide on this side, and that's going to multiply everything here by two, and so it's going to change the potassium here to two, but it's also going to affect the bromine. It's going to change that to two as well. Now, as I'm solving this, I want to keep kind of looking up to the top just to make sure everything is still balanced. Aluminum's still good. Potassium's now okay. Now I can move down to the next one here, bromine. Again, I listed them in order, metals down to non-metals, saving oxygen right till the end. So I have six bromines on this side, only two on this side. So I put a two here, but now I'm going to have to change it. I'm going to change that to a six. The reason I'm going to do that is because I want to end up with six bromines so that it balances this side. So when I put that six out front, that multiplies all this stuff by six. So I just changed the amount of potassium to six. I also changed the bromine to six. Now remember, as I change these coefficients, I always want to check back to the top just to make sure everything is still okay. Aluminum's still fine, but you notice potassium is not okay anymore. Now I have six on this side, but I only have two over on this side. So now I'm going to fix potassium before moving on. I have two here, so if I put a three out front of this compound, that's going to change this to six potassiums, because I have two times three. So now potassium is balanced, but notice that I also affected the sulfur and the oxygen. So three um, out front is going to give me three sulfurs. And then the three is also going to affect the oxygen. I had four, so it's four times three. Now I have 12 oxygens, and now we can go through and check. Aluminum's okay, potassium, good. Bromine is good, sulfur is good, and oxygen is good. This is why we leave oxygen till the very end, because usually it's gonna balance itself out. So for this balanced chemical equation, we just needed a two out front here, a three, a six, and then nothing over here, and then this is our balanced chemical equation.